If you're going on a cruise, there's something that you should know. There are things that crew members wish that cruise passengers wouldn't do, from things that are not allowed to things that are perhaps a little bit inappropriate to ways that we make their job harder to do. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, I was recently scrolling through Facebook and I came across a post by Carnival Ambassador John Heald. And what he was doing was sharing something, well, that cruise passengers shouldn't do, that something that crew members really dislike and that does make their job harder. So it was a little bit of a warning. When I came across that, I did think there are probably other things that cruise passengers are doing. Of course, that was true. And I came across something that sometimes is shared as a little bit of a cruise tip. Well, cruise lines really do warn that this can have dire consequences, not only for crew members, but for other passengers. Now, I also found some information that comes straight from crew members that either have worked or do work on cruises right now. And by the way, I am gonna leave those resources where I found that information linked down below in the description of this video. Now, before I get started sharing the nine things that crew members wish that cruise passengers wouldn't do, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, let's start with cruise embarkation day and something that crew members really don't want cruise passengers to do. And by the way, this was what was shared on Facebook by John Heald, Carnival's ambassador. So basically, if cruise passengers are able to go to their cabin to drop off their carry-on bags before the cabins are really open to the public and that is because sometimes there's an early embarkation program that people may have purchased like faster to the fun other times it's because they have loyalty perks or maybe they're in a suite well basically to drop off your carry-on bags and to leave don't take this as a time to unpack or anything else and basically the reason is because these stateroom attendants are not finished cleaning. So this was a little bit of a warning to cruise passengers because of course this makes the job for the cabin stewards really much harder and it makes it really difficult if cruise passengers are saying that the crew are actually being rude when they tell them that they need to leave. It's just that this is kind of the policy until those cabins are open to the public. Number two, let's talk bathrooms and toilet paper. Have you ever noticed that the toilet paper on cruise ships is pretty thin? I definitely noticed that. Well, what some cruise passengers do is they may bring their own toilet paper. And of course that's to have softer toilet paper. The problem is that the pipes and the toilets and the whole system on a cruise ship is different than in your home. And basically when cruise passengers put anything into the toilet other than the toilet paper that is there and provided in the cruise ship cabin, it can result in blockages, not only in your cabin, but even overflowing into hallways and other cabins and none of us wants that. So cruise lines don't want passengers to be bringing their own toilet paper onto a cruise ship. And the other thing that they don't want cruise passengers to flush down the toilet, you know, amongst other things, of course, that are obvious, but are those sort of wet wipes and those sort of flushable wipes that is not good for the toilets on a cruise. But something that you can do if you do bring any of these items is there are those sanitary bags, usually in cabins, or you can just ask for them. And basically, if you do want to use any of these items and the stateroom attendant can dispose of it. Now, beyond things that John Heald or other cruise lines warn cruisers about, there are some things that according to crew members, well, they're either not allowed or not appropriate, or they may even just be annoying. Complaints to guest services. Of course, complaining to guest services is fine when you have an actual problem, but guest services deal with a lot of complaints. And well, one of the things that you don't really want to complain about is the weather. So if the weather is not good on the cruise, do not go to guest services to complain about the weather. As you can understand, guest services cannot do anything about the weather on a cruise. 
Don't interrupt crew if they are in the middle of their safety drills. So something that you're gonna notice is that on port days, there are often some safety drills. Sometimes they have to do with the lifeboats. Sometimes they have to do with just other things. And usually this is announced over the intercom. But something that you don't wanna do is you don't wanna interrupt the crew members when they are in the middle of their safety drills. And obviously their attention has to be focused on this. Even though they want to talk with guests, they want to help guests out, this is just not the time. Don't ask crew members to break the rules or make exceptions for you. Now this is in particular when there are certain policies. So for instance, maybe there are policies when it comes to age restrictions and drink packages. First of all, the policies are actually set by head office or by corporate. And most of the time, the crew members really don't have any leeway on this. But if they do make an exception, well, what can happen is that people do talk. People talk on the cruise ship, people talk on social media, people talk on YouTube videos. And truthfully, it does really put the crew member in a bad position and they could even lose their job. Now, there's one thing that I have a feeling people do ask crew members, especially these days, and is something that when I read this, I thought, oh yeah, that is really inappropriate. I'll share that in just a moment. Don't go on a cruise for one specific destination. Now this is a little bit of advice that crew members have to guests because it can be very disappointing if people go on a cruise, for instance, because they really want to go to St. Thomas and then that itinerary changes or maybe the captain was not able to sail to that cruise port because of the weather. And basically what happens is, and crew members see it all and hear it all, is that passengers start complaining. They complain to guest services, they complain on the cruise ship. And when it comes to the itinerary, that is one of the things that's just a reality of cruising is an itinerary is never guaranteed. And in particular, when it comes to weather, storms and safety, it is possible to miss a port and have an itinerary change. Saying inappropriate things or asking inappropriate questions. Now I know there are some crew members that do watch these videos. So if you have anything else to add, please do so in the comments of this video. But some of the examples that were pointed out were asking crew members where they sleep and in particular who they might be sleeping with if they know that a crew member might have a girlfriend or a wife or a husband on board. Those are just not appropriate things to ask. And the other thing has to do with how they are being paid. And I think a lot of people have a lot of curiosity about how crew members are being paid, but just like you wouldn't want a crew member asking you how much you're being paid at your job or how much money your business makes, it really isn't appropriate to ask a crew member that either. Now this one might surprise you because it really is the opposite of almost everything else that we've talked about up until now, but something that crew members hate or don't like is when guests do not bring up a problem or a concern that they have. And the reason is that sometimes passengers are so polite, so nice, they don't wanna cause a problem, but then they do not bring up something that is a genuine issue. So an issue, for example, could be that the water pressure isn't strong enough in the shower, or maybe that the water doesn't get hot enough. These are generally not very difficult things to solve. There are actually engineers, there are plumbers, there are electricians that are right on the cruise ship and even there for emergencies, by the way. So don't hesitate to bring these things up because oftentimes what does happen is those same passengers might complain to other passengers on the cruise ship, or they might complain on social media, or they might just not go back on that cruise line or that cruise ship again, or they may have complaints that they're going to mention in the survey. It's always better to let the crew members know and you can always go speak to guest services or even your cabin attendant. Now this should go without saying, but we all know that it does happen. Of course, crew members don't like it when guests yell or are impolite or are rude to them. And there's really no reason for that. So even if you have a complaint, always stay polite. Remember that the other person, the crew member, they are going to probably stand there with a smile. They're probably going to deal with it in a very professional way. They are pretty amazing, but they're still a human being and really nobody wants to ruin somebody else's day. So just keep that in mind, even when things go wrong. Now there probably are other things that crew members or cruise lines wish that cruise passengers wouldn't do. But I really do think that the toilet paper, that is one that we could all agree on. Now, if you've seen any of these things or you have anything else to add, please do let me know down in the comments below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.